Hello and welcome to the big picture. The Taliban's announcement that it would hold peace talks with America and the subsequent realization that Afghanistan government is not going to be a part of it has surprised observers across the world. The Afghan government's immediate suspension of its own talks with America and the strong reaction of Afghan President Hamid Karzai indicates what seems like an unwise move by the Americans. The opening of a political office by the Taliban in Doha has also irked the Afghan government. Indian and other governments stand earlier that any peace effort should be Afghan-led seems to have been given a go-by by the Americans who are planning direct talks with the Taliban. Many questions have cropped up now. Why has Taliban suddenly decided to hold peace talks? Is it serious about it or is it a ploy? Why has America decided to hold talks without Afghan presence? Will all this effort remain a non-starter or can we expect any forward movement as the NATO-led troops prepare to pull out of Afghanistan next year? We will discuss all this today with Vivek Karju, former Indian ambassador to Afghanistan, Major General retired Ashok Mehta, Anand Sahai, coordinating editor Asian Age, and Ashok Behuria, research fellow at the Institute of Defense Studies and Analysis. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Karju, coming to you first. You have served there as an ambassador. This, does, did this come as a surprise to you, that this announcement that there's going to be a peace talks between Taliban and America? Uh, to a degree, yes. Because for the last three to four months, uh, it had seemed that the Americans, uh, the Europeans, uh, and the major section of the Afghans were almost giving up on the reconciliation process. Right. And focusing on uh, a credible elections. Now, obviously, uh, back channels were operating between the Americans and the Pakistanis and the Taliban. Now we, are, and, we come uh, to know that the Norway has played a role in this. There has been peace. There has been some secret talks for the last several three months almost, which, which, uh, you know, which was being held in Norway. It's possible that they were being held in Norway, but Norway hardly has the clout to play a role in this. Uh, I think uh, the Scandinavians are do-gooders and, and let them do, try to do good, but they don't have the clout or the power to do all this. So it's really the Americans who are doing it. For the Ameri and, and Pakistanis, you think? And of course the Pakistanis. I mean, let's, let's face it. Because the, the real problem with a reconciliation process or a post-2014 Afghanistan is that if the Taliban insurgency continues, then any government in Kabul will be under deep pressure. And, and uh, the question is, will the politics of Afghanistan hold? Will the center hold? If the center holds, the hope was that the army will hold and that the Taliban insurgency would be able to be combated. That was plan B. But plan A was always to try to do something with the Taliban. Now, two things, if I may say very quickly. One, uh, obviously, uh, Karza has been very upset because the Taliban have um, put out uh, and they've used the, the old emirate uh, flag. That means their own flag. Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. Exactly. So therefore, they are putting themselves on the, on the same footing as uh, the Afghan government. As the, as the government. Now, yesterday's, uh, yesterday at a press conference uh, with Merkel, which he held along yes. with Merkel, you mean, uh, Barack, you mean Barack Obama? I'm coming, yes. Obama said, was asked this question. And Obama did not sort of take all these factors into account. He said that friction was expected, that this will not be a smooth process. But he put it very bluntly. Uh, he sort of asked the Afghans, he said, do you want some kind of peace to prevail after 2014? Or do you want civil strife to continue? So, in a sense, he's put Karzai on notice. And uh, it's going to be a difficult process. But th the point is that the Americans have, per se, never had a problem with the Taliban. Their problem was the Taliban giving succor and giving a base to the Al-Qaeda. And today, it would seem that uh, in, within Taliban councils, that nexus which they had with the Al-Qaeda has weakened and they've said openly that they won't allow their territory to be and, used. And, and Americans are happy with that. Now, we'll be happy with that. Americans are happy with that. Now, whether this means that their nexus has broken totally, one doesn't know, but it seems to have weakened. 
So it is early days, but the, the parties which have gained enormously are the Taliban and Pakistan. We will come to that. Major General Ashok Mehta, do you think the Americans are doing the wise thing by keeping Afghanistan out of this talks? Because they, you know, Afghanistan has, has been is very upset with it. They said that you go and open the office in Doha, then this flag is flying of the Islamic, Islamic Emirates. So what is this, what is the strategy of the Americans to have these talks with Taliban directly by excluding the Afghanistan government? I think nobody really believes in the credibility of this process, not even the Americans. This is part of a uh, larger game that is being played, uh, A, for the, uh, for the, for the so-called political process, what people have called the diplomatic surge, the reconciliation surge. But we've been through all this before. I mean, uh, this process of reconciliation and talking to the Taliban has been going on for the last four years. Who has not tried talking to the Taliban? The Japanese, the Germans, the Saudis, the Qataris, uh, the Brits, the Americans. What are we talking about? And where is the credibility on in this process where the Americans keep shifting the goalposts? What they had as preconditions are now have now become outcomes. In this process of conversation with the Taliban, they have the Brits have talked to an imposter, a taxi driver from some uh, uh, Birmingham who came and posed as a Taliban <laughs> and took away a lot of money. So I would suggest personally that the outcome from this dialogue is, is, is going to be practically zero because in my conversations, and which I have on a monthly basis with Afghans, no Afghan believes that there is any possibility under the circumstances for the Taliban to accept some of these preconditions even as outcomes. Absolutely no way will this happen. And so this process is part of a larger game that the Americans play to satisfy uh, the international community and their own domestic constituency to ensure what they call that the withdrawal is a responsible withdrawal. No, the, the operative word is responsible. It's not cut and run. So they want, they, they're just so trying they're to, saying they're, they're just trying to show they're that. They're exploring you know, they're all <laughs> options and the Taliban have made capital out of this because they've flown their flag. At least now, I believe they've removed the flag. They, rem they removed the board uh, which talks about their Islamic uh, Emirates. The government. And, uh, and, and they have come out there, and thanks to the Saudis and the Qataris, and as Vivek just said, people who come out good from this are Talib the Taliban Pakistanis and the, and the Taliban. And one last thing I'd say. What does it do to the credibility of this, what you, you were saying, the Afghan-led, Afghan-owned, what the hell are the Americans doing? That on the one hand, you keep talking about uh, an Afghan-led process, and then you engage in direct talks with the Taliban because the Taliban say they refuse to talk to the Afghans. Karzai, uh, to Karzai because he's a lackey of the Americans. Ashok, you, you, do you agree with uh, Major General Mehta or do you think, why is there, is this a sense of urgency which uh, the US is showing to, uh, you know, because that the deadline is nearing and they have to show just, is it just a show? No, I think Americans are always looking for a face saver. And uh, as it happens in uh, a dialogue, in a, in a conciliation dialogue, one party has to accommodate. And now Americans, knowing fully well that the Taliban's are not uh, buzzing at all, you know, they are now climbed down. I would, I sense a serious, so serious, a serious down, effect here. You see this as a climb down of the of Americans. Of course, it is because if you look at the America, the, the newspaper reports that come crowding in, the Americans have not put it as a condition that you know the Al Qaeda and Taliban will come together after or, or the Al Qaeda 
Taliban nexus yes. will not be discussed. Yes. So that is a huge, huge concession because Americans with all their sophisticated intelligence apparatus, they know pretty well that uh, the, the Haqqani faction and part of Quetta Shura still hubnab with Al-Qaeda. And if you look at the TTP in Pakistan, they are deeply Al-Qaedaized. So knowing it fully well, they are only trying to placate the Taliban with the hope that there will be a server available to them to stage a responsible, as General Mehta said, to stage a responsible withdrawal. But if you look at the ground realities in Afghanistan today, day before yesterday you had, uh, you had an attack on Mohawk. Right? And then after that, you know, you find uh, Mutasim Agazan, you know, coming up and saying that, you know, you can broadly divide Taliban into two groups, the radical and the moderate. Right. And he belongs to the moderate faction. And uh, he didn't this say... This effort he, has been... No, he left it on. This unsaid. effort has been on by the Americans quite some time. Good Taliban, bad, bad Taliban. Bad Taliban. So he's, yeah. he's just reiterating that. But, you know, what he left unsaid was this, that, you know, Taliban is still under the grip of the bad Taliban. So that is what you know uh, gives me reason to apprehend trouble at the end of this dialogic process, because if they you know they cannot uh, First they cannot it start whether you know, it's Americans start cannot Americans Americans cannot uh, nego you know concede endlessly, you know they will have to take up certain issues like next in line is the constitution whether to incorporate Sharia whether to incorporate Islamic principles yes. there. And all these things will come up again and again. So there are so many stumbling blocks okay. ahead. Stumbling blocks and tricky issues involved. Uh, uh, Anand, Anand like, let us look at it from the Taliban's point of view. Why do you think that Taliban is now come around to the table? There are, uh, you know, some observers and analysts feel that they are a little worried that once, once the NATO-led troops leave, then they will have less uh, leeway to, to, to talk or discuss than what they have now and that's why they are, they are now sh you know, showing uh, these things to come to the peace table. See, I think you've narrowed it uh, uh, down too much. The broader picture is this is one of the turning points of the last 12 years. Post-Soviet, American occupation, this is a important turning point. I am not surprised. I've been hearing things for the past three to four weeks. Okay. And that has always led me to think that the Afghan government, Karzai and so on, they've been in negotiations with Pakistan not to go in the direction which has, only, which has crystallized <coughs> yesterday and day before yesterday. They knew... So it's some kind of a setback to the Afghan government? Not setback. I mean, words like setback don't help you here. Okay. The Afghan government has been telling the Americans that, listen, do not create any conditions through talk, through, you know... Memorandum of understanding, unsigned, have been exchanged, etc., with Qatar, with the Taliban, etc., virtually giving the Taliban the office, the status of an embassy, right, from which they will operate, including things like duty-free stuff, and with eventually with the aim, in my view, of there being able, you know, the 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 discussion and reports that will, you know, emanating from there to go up to the Security Council, etc., you know. This is a full-fledged attempt to negate the existence of the present elected government of Afghanistan operating under a constitution that was cleared at Bonn, which means what we are saying is that everything which has happened politically in the last 10, 12 years, no matter what... Is being negated. Is being negated under a plan... By Americans. By the Americans, because the, in the estimation of the Americans their interests will be perhaps better served with the Taliban in office in Kabul rather than anyone else. That is the longer term. Shorter term, they feel that unless they placate Taliban, which is equivalent of saying placating the Pakistan, their withdrawal from you know, this country may become very messy. You know, men, materials, etc., etc., may become very, very messy. That's one thing. And the longer thing is, longer term thing is, if they wish to be in a position, if they, meaning Americans, to intervene in the geoeconomics of that region also in time to come, then with the Taliban there, with the Pakistan there, their interests will be better served than under any other dispensation, whether Mr. Karzai or anybody else in the future. Next year, there's an election coming up. By doing what they've done is, 
the Americans have completely, completely undermined the chances of a proper election, proper defined in the Afghan context, next year. They have virtually said, OK, listen, boys, here it is. Uh, the Taliban leader will be your leader next year on as we leave. We may even leave prior to the dates that we have fixed earlier. That's entirely feasible. And this has been done at the highest levels, Mr. Obama's level. Mr. Obama, when he was with Merkel and he spoke to the media, I think he was being blasé. He was being say, he was saying that, well, either you have peace. I mean, what peace? You know, I mean, these are flippant words in a very grave context for a country that has been at war for 30, 40 years, of 30 of which have been America-inspired in great part. Right. Yes, yes uh, Mr. Kanju. No, uh, no, because he's, his, his, uh, what, what Anand is saying is you know, very interesting. He's saying that Americans are undoing everything which was trying to be done all, all, all these days. They're trying uh, to put the Taliban back in back, place. Back in place. Uh, I think the Americans have embarked on a process where they want to co-opt the Taliban into uh, some, in some manner or form, into authority in, uh, in uh, Kabul. Now, uh, not 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 as Anand says, you know, place them in in the seat of power. No, co-opt. I think it's because the Americans do realize that uh, uh, that uh, there is a non-Pashtun population in Afghanistan, which will be very very wary of the Taliban coming in. There'll be neighboring countries of. Uh, Afghanistan, which will again be very wary of the Taliban being there. There will be other countries uh, like uh, Russia, which will again be very circumspect when it comes to the prospect of the Taliban. So they have embarked on a process and uh, perhaps the end game is, as Anand says, that may be one section of American opinion. Because as I said right at the beginning, per se, the Americans never had any problem with the Taliban. But today, the game is far more complex. And I do and not it, it know... It will become more complex by, by what they are attempting now. You see, how can you do away with the elections? Exactly. You unravel everything. Now, the uh, uh, interesting point is that many Pakistanis have been talking for a while now of trying to create a system which would be something like the Iranian system, where you have Mullah Umar as a kind of a supreme leader. <laughs> huh? Really? I mean, uh, it might sound bizarre, but yes. that's what's, what's being but talked he about. He's a supreme leader, isn't he? <laughs> so he becomes a supreme leader of the country. No, it's not a laughing matter at all. No, no, it is. He becomes the supreme leader of the country, right? And then and, you have a... And then you can have elections, controlled elections, etc., in which the Taliban can also take part. So. That will is maybe the end game which some of the Pakistanis may want and which... And Americans may be playing ball. Americans, with... some sections of Americans may think that we can go down the road. But I do not think that the Americans are so powerful as to ramrod this through uh, in, in the Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan non-Pashtun ethnic groups. And Absolutely. they have some clout and some power those ethnic groups to... You know, uh, to upset the American apple cart, it, it's, it's in a mess. It I can't even, be so I neat. Say, I agree with that. I'd say even the Pashtuns. I don't think this... Yes, this, many of the I Pashtuns I don't think too. that what has been uh, done right now will cut ice easily. And I think... Uh, with, with the Pashtuns too. With the Pashtuns too. With, see, with the don't make the Pashtun mistake Pashtun of opinion. thinking that every... All, all Pashtuns are Taliban. Yes, yes. You know, like every Hindu is not RSS. Yes. Every Muslim is not jamaat e islami Right. right. It's exactly there are the various same factions thing. within. Right. Yes. But, 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 but what I would say is, as important as it might be for the president of Afghanistan to rally regional powers, you know, uh, to the to his best ability, I think it's as important as that to try and mobilize regional political blocks in the country. That but, means ethnic blocks okay, and but others. May, may, uh, Mehta, to, to, to take Mehta, this on. Yes. Yeah, I, no, I, General Mehta, I, I, you please... Uh, I you, 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 are, you please, I'll, I have no, a question. No, I, I have a question. I, yeah. I have a question which uh, you can address after you finish what you want to yeah. say. The Taliban, why... You know, I asked the same question to uh, Anand also. Why is the Taliban doing this? They, you know, 
Is it, is it just part of the plan which the Americans have, are laying out the blueprint for them and they are following it? Or they have something else in their mind? Are they just following the American blueprint? No, I don't think so. Firstly, you have to ask this question, which Taliban are which you Taliban? talking about? You have no idea about the Haqqani group. You have no idea about Gulbuddin. But, if, you, if, you, but if you're whether, saying that whether, Mullah... Whether, no, and but within, if you're the, the, Mullah within the Taliban is the, itself. And, and so, if you get a so-called, take a section of the Taliban which you describe as good, and you get them on board a process which has nowhere near starting. You know, Vivek is saying, embark on a process. The process has no outline, no contours. Today, the first meeting was supposed to have taken place and there is some no, doubts no. being expressed My about dear, it. We have be, as, I, as I've been saying, that, well, if it is a turning point, damn good. But I cannot believe that suddenly you found a turning point. Suddenly, the Pakistanis and the Mullah Omar, the, the Quetta Shura, are cooperating. What will happen to the international community and the people who have invested? Exactly. Who, who, I, who, I wanted who, to ask you that question. The Tur Turkish government had taken the lead. There were a lot of meetings held in the last one oh, year in different places. What no, happened? We, we, All of that has, has, has been completely negated by this process? No, no. That, of course, you know, you're talking about the Istanbul process. Yes. The, the regional process, but there is something much bigger. There are donors who are involved right. in this. There is a democratic process you have started. How can you shortchange that democratic process to make this appear as some kind of a strategic move in which the Taliban makes tactical concessions? What do you do to the credibility of a president, no matter um, how unfairly uh, un, uh, he may have been elected, who's been in government now no. for so long, what will happen? What will happen to the memorandum of understanding? Exactly. I that, want that I, the uh, okay, Americans Ashok, are, uh, I think we have to look at it from a different perspective. At the moment, uh, you have asked the right question. How come uh, Taliban are open to dialogue exactly. now? Exactly. Because they have been denying this uh, yes. all, all through. Why, why now, are they doing this? Yeah, and I think you have to look at, uh, look at it from Islamabad's perspective. I think Pakistan has decided to you know, persuade Taliban to join this way. And they have also perhaps, you know, uh, there is a convergence of interest between them and the Americans now. Because you know, if you look at you know Pakistan's decision now, Pakistan has decided to uh, uh, expel or 1.7 million refugees, Afghan refugees from Pakistan now, at this juncture, that speaks volumes about Pakistan's own concerns Intention. about Taliban. So <coughs> Pakistan is perhaps <coughs> hoping against hope that you know if, if we inject Taliban into this process, perhaps something will uh, come out of it, and that will ease the pressure at home. So that is because of, I would look at it from Pakistan's perspective. Pakistan is perhaps weighing in on the Taliban to come to a dialogue. Okay. <coughs> Both uh, Mr. Karju and Anand, quickly, where does India stand in all these things? Where, where do you think, what do you think India should do in, you know, in considering the developing situation? Well, is India a player in player Afghanistan as of today? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We want to be. No, no, you might want to be anything, but are you a serious player? You have links with the uh, with Karzai. They are strong links. Yes. Uh, we have also. I would like to think some connections with with our old friends in the northern. What was the Northern Alliance? I'm not quite sure what is the state of those friendships. But as far as this process, which is uh, taking place uh, in Doha, or which is perhaps being attempted, attempted to take to place, take play, takes yeah. place in Doha. Uh, at most, the Americans must be keeping us informed in a peripheral way so that we don't play spoilers. <clears throat> but I think beyond that, uh, India in this game I is not. Have however, it. however, India has much at stake. Absolutely. That's, because that's exactly I, the point. I, I, for one, uh, I'm convinced that at the end of the day, really at the remote end of the day, uh, whoever is in power in, in Kabul will deal with us. Yes. Yes, Anand. Quickly. But in the short term, it's going to be difficult. Anand, quickly. I think Vivek is dead right. Uh, there's a lot at stake for India and for all. We can't the, be sitting, keeping quiet, and, watching and for all, all those who want stability and peace in the region, which Pakistan does not want. 
which the Taliban do not want. You know, if they come in more aggressively, then you know, they are the ones, only ones who've been aggressive about what they want in the last 10 years, besides the Americans, right? If others don't come in in the same manner to counter this politically, I think it's going to be, you know, there's a disaster written on the wall. So one second, and, yes. I, and, I, and I'm not as pessimistic at all, because I think politically speaking, being engaged doesn't mean only sending weapons, you know. That equipment, etc., of a certain order, quantities apart. But politically, I think India has aligned itself closely with Mr. Karzai's government, because that was the and only he, government. And they should continue but to do it. Besides, India is also closely aligned with every section of Afghan political opinion, so, barring the Taliban and the Hezb Islami. You know? And we should continue to do that. I think we ought to continue to do that, okay, and, that and make that extremely clear to all concerned. Okay, on that note, I think we have completely run out of time. On that note, we need to end. India needs to continue to do what it is doing. But as my other panelists were pointing out, it's a complete. it could become a complete mess if... Uh, the way things are going, but we'll wait and watch how some some observers and analysts have said that these kind of process takes a long time to take off. Also, we will wait and see what happens. Thanks to all my guests, Ashok Behuria, Major Janjal Mehta, and uh, Vivek Karju and Anand Sahai. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue, big picture, same time tomorrow.